happy little pens. Let's journey down the road together and find out where it ends. Bring your creativity, forgive what we will bring. Drawing, breathing, bringing all new worlds into being. Good evening, everybody. We're back. I took a couple weeks off. Uh, two weeks ago, we did a live watch along of the Lord of the Rings over the weekend. And then after that, we got sick of the house. But we're all great now, 100%. So we're back. And we're going to keep going on our map tonight. How is everybody doing tonight? What are you up to? What are you reading? What are you working on? And uh, what are you hoping to do this week? So I'm going to get going here on this map while I wait for comments to pop in. A um, couple things that uh, I did. Hello, Aditha. Welcome. Um, I'm going to work on Dragon Skull uh, Island tonight. And um, I did do a little bit of touch up on kind of other parts of the map we worked on. We, you know, we had our main continent over, over here uh, that we had done a lot of racing on to kind of clean up what we were working on. And I went back in with a thicker... Um, a thicker pen just on the coast to retouch just the coast specifically to give it a little darker. Um, and I'll probably get back to that um, here in a bit, but I thought tonight we would start on Dragon Island, Dragon Head Island, and, um, and just see what happens. So um, yeah, let's get our pens ready and um, talk about what we've, been doing, what we've been doing this week. So what have you all been working on, reading, writing, arithmetic, whatever? I'm using my number 05 on this one, which I like to use for the coast. When I'm going in thicker, I'm actually I've got an 08 that actually has some, still has a lot of good ink in it. So I've been using that to go for my retouches. I had a big old goal this week to write this weekend to write a whole bunch of words, um, and I failed at that. I didn't do a whole lot. I got stuck with uh, kind of being <clears throat> angry with the outline and the writing myself, uh, but I was able to get past some of that just by skipping a scene and moving on to the next part. Um, because sometimes you just got to move on a little bit, and I can go back and fix it later. Because you know, like they say, you can't edit a blank page. Better to be Better to have a first draft that is done, and that's what I've been working on. I've got Anitha um, about four thousand words for the weekend. Um, I wanted to hit fifteen, which would have been big. Um, and if I hadn't gotten upset with what I was writing, I probably would have done it. But I just wasn't happy. It just felt too plotty and not character-driven enough. Uh, the characters were just kind of there as puppets. And it was making me mad. So I moved on a little bit. But usually when I do that, I'll generally just skip to the end of that chapter and say, XX, I will keep going and um, come back and look for all the XXs I put down. I could still hit 8,000, Anitha, if by some miracle tomorrow I write 4,000 words. So it could still happen. Let's see. So, T, you're reading Tolkien and listening to Tolkien at the same time, huh? Or did you finish Return of the King? I, um halfway through the afternoon yesterday decided to finally jump back into Fool's Errand. So I'm back to that. I'm on page 400 of 650. So I'm finally going to finish this book. I read it when it first came out, <clears throat> but I didn't finish it. And I'm mad at myself for that. So I picked up all three books for the trilogy, and I've just been slowly whittling my way through that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not that it requires whittling, it just takes the right mindset to read a hub book sometimes. 
I am um, three quarters of the way through, Anitha. So um, I don't know how much of the book you've read, and I don't want to spoil anything. But they are currently <clears throat> and <clears throat> are on the road with <clears throat> going after. <clears throat> That's where I'm at. Oh, yeah, why not? Well, stop looking at my face. There you go. Is that better? Basically, Lord Golden just um, conducted a scandal to get them out of town, and I'm on the chapter after that. So that should be a non-spoilery way of saying exactly where I'm at, where I am right now. And how is everybody's writing coming along? You know, our erudites here are doing some writing. How is that coming? Anitha, when is your um, book three for Wheel of Time due? Is that coming up here pretty soon, or do you have a couple weeks to, to push it off? That's great. Getting close to the end. How many words is it? Uh, where like uh, do you have do you have a word count goal or are you just um, getting to the point where you're at the end of the story? And if so, how long is it? Okay. <clears throat> Before we go into mountains on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and pop in and do the coastal work. Now you can kind of see, you know, once you get the hang of it and you really get practice to be able to just do it, you don't have to be super meticulous on certain parts. And then you can get down to the nitty gritty of focusing on how, um, on what you want to focus on. And remember this first line for the coast, I try to do a longer one longer lines, and then I do shorter ones that also go over the gaps in the in the lines. It's like right here, I'll cover those. Yeah, when are you due to start reading uh, Butch Baker, Candlestick Taker, Anitha.
I think Archie is everybody's favorite. <laughs> I'll tell Trish she said that. She's uh, reading tonight, so she's got camera and YouTube off today. She just We just got GCM Burns uh, trilogy uh, from Joe, and she's reading that right now and enjoying it. Yeah, we are. Um, it hit the kids first um, and then hit me, and Trisha never got it. She was very lucky. She got some of the symptoms, but not all of them, so she kind of blew right past it. It's an exhausting virus, too, so um, even after I felt not sick anymore, I still had 24 hours. I just laid in bed and did nothing, um, which was so worth it. And, it, you know, it's important to listen to your body. I know they always, you know, you talk about the man flu and how we just crash when we get sick, which I've never really had man flu necessarily. I, I can, I can power through when I have to. Um, but it seems that a lot, because, uh, because we do just shut down when we get sick, we heal faster because we allow our bodies to heal. If you do try to work through your sickness, uh, that actually is detrimental to your body healing from it. So it's important to let yourself just crash a little bit sometimes. Daniel Tiger says, rest is best, and it's true. <laughs> no, you shouldn't power through. If, you, if you're sick, you got to let your body heal. And the best way to do that is to just I mean, my dad talks about, he went to college and there was, I can't remember what, what country another student was from, but he, he rolled in and when he would get sick, he would take every blanket from everybody in the dorm, like, like 20 blankets and he would smother himself with blankets and basically forcefully raise his temperature and sweat it out. And when he woke up the next morning, it's like he hadn't been sick. And so he, and so, I mean, I would not advise that. I, I actually do the reverse when I get sick. I, um, I crash. Uh, I know fevers can, can, can be good for you, but, but I, I crash my fevers with showers. If I get too, too feverish, I I'll take three showers in a day just to keep my temperature down because, um, I do not enjoy feverish hallucinations. They are miserable. And I'd rather have a longer flu than a really miserable one like that. And I'm not dead yet, so I must be doing something right. Is that a um, something your family does? Like, is it something that's been like a how your family deals with sickness in the past, or just something that you had done um, because of things you had read? Or is it a is it? Um, I think you're from I think you're from Alaska originally, right? So is that like an Alaska remedy? See, yeah, that's smart. <laughs> no, it's not fun. <laughs> not fun at all. I know there have even been like studies I've heard where like hospitals have taken 
done a blood transfusion where they transfuse your own blood out and kind of and cook it like take it up to like a hundred and you know a dangerous level like 105 and then they cool it before it brings they put it back into your blood system so it doesn't kill the blood but it does cook out the viruses um and then and then, you know they do it through several several cycles it's really cool and it's like i mean if it works it's dangerous but you know if you're in a hospital setting and you can get a blood transfusion then there's there's other ways around it but it's very interesting Didn't have, I was hoping to have a show and tell today, but it's still in the mail. But I do have my arc coming of um, my proof version of Force Cord, which is coming out on April 4th. So next Monday, I bet I'll have a copy to show off um, if you don't already see it all over social media before then. But that is in the mail, and everything is all set for coming out on the 4th. Um, just got to get a box of books in so I can send some on to uh, Silverstones. They will have the signed copies as well as Thrice. So if you're looking for getting both of them, uh, they will have them available. I am, uh, no, I'm not nervous. I'm very excited. Um, I, I feel it, it's definitely starting to feel like old hat. Like it's, I, I know what I'm doing with the release and I'm not all that worried. I more get worried of like, can I get a box to Silverstones in time? Um, which I, I, sh I should be able to, I, I've got a couple weeks still. Um, but it's with print, with printing, with printing. You never know. You never know what's going to be. Um, how long does it take to, for things to ship? Um, there, there, there have been a few uh, pre-orders. Not a whole lot. I'm still trying to work out how to get pre-orders to be to be bigger. And they will be. I think with Collation Three um, this summer, I bet we'll see quite a few pre-orders for that one. Um, and I'm, I, I should be well ahead of schedule on that one. Um, it's with the editor right now, and as long as he's working on that here pretty soon, I can get to recording it. Um, August is going to be the release date for number three, unless I can get it done faster. And that entirely depends on how soon I can start recording it. Because I always release my books um, as print, ebook, and audiobook at the same time. Um, and that's just how I do it. So. Um, I'll be super excited and pumped for that. If I can push that up even a couple of weeks to around my birthday at the end of July, then I will um, I will do that because that's actually when I released the old original version of, of Collation. The first book came out on my birthday um, so that I could say that the Collation cycle at that time could be started by my birthday, on my 40th birthday. So I did do that uh, last year. Um, and it'd be cool if book three comes out on my birthday. Uh, last last week of July is my birthday. I spent my 30th birthday climbing a mountain, one of the hardest climbs in the Rockies. Not even to the top of the mountain, it's actually to a side part of the mountain, but it's just one of the harder climbs. And now that I'm back in Colorado, living here again, we're going to get ourselves back in shape and see if we can do some more mountains come this summer. So, you know. No, no pressure, T. You do it on your own time.
There we go. There's the coastline for Dragonhead. I'll go ahead and do the mountains now. Oh, and we got to do the inner lakes. Do those. Does anybody have any exciting releases that they are have been seeing that they're looking forward to? I don't know if any of you are, I'm not personally, but if you are an Aragon fan, there was a new Aragon book that was announced uh, last week. And I'm not an Aragon fan in the sense that I've never read them. And because I was, it was just didn't, didn't land at the same time as I would have been the target audience. Meaning to say I'm old. Nice, nice. Which uh, which book is that? I think. Cool. So that was just that was just announced. Did they start putting out um, covers for that? I've got. I know that um, Philip Chase's book I think comes out on Tuesday, right? Yeah. Doesn't that come out on Tuesday, or did it come out last this last week? Um, I'm I'm excited to read that one. I really am. I think I'm behind the target audience for sure. Um, I I th I think I want to wait for it to get a physical copy. So I'm waiting to see what uh, what ends up landing with that one. What's the lives in the lives of puppets? Is that like a Muppets book or something else? Cool, cool. And did you pick? Did you pick that one up physically? D didn't did the two of you just go on a big old book buying haul, right? You just did a. You just went to the bookstore and and came back with a huge stack. I think.
Nice. I did work on some frames, which I did not say what they were, but I was showing them on Twitter. Um, frames for cities that I'll be working on for my map, and I will pull those out here in just a second. If you ever look at um, pictures by like Misty B, uh, maps by Misty B, and do a lot of the old city styles. <clears throat> So that's what these are that I had up on Twitter. Someone guessed it was a magic system. It's not. Um, so I'll be drawing cities in each of these. And then when I scan them in, I can um, put them on top of my, my main map. So like older versions are things like, like these, where I've drawn just quick sketches of cities and then gone in and drawn them better while I'm going to be drawing them a lot better this time. Um, so these are from like five, six years ago. So I found different architects for different architectures for the style of of um, culture each uh, city is in, and then I'll draw and ink those. So I'll be drawing these in these larger larger pieces, and then each of the different um, um, like the like the circle is humans, and this one is um, I can't say, and this is Kabil and uh, programs are triangles, whatnot. So different different cultures have different uh, styles. So that's what those are. Um, yes, Anitha, the cover is almost ready. I'm not quite happy with it yet. I'm still working on it, trying to get the color um, uh, to work because I have kind of a uh, progression of seasons going on and I'm trying to get it to not look the colors aren't working for me yet. I'm almost there. Um, it does have a title, and I haven't said what it is yet, but it's coming. I haven't decided when I'm going to say it, so I'm not going to say it tonight, but soon. Um, I need to work on the cover just a little bit more, and I may start even spoiling that. Plus, Four Scords coming out, so I'll probably wait until Four Scords had a little a little life um, before I start doing that. But yes, there is 100% a title. I have books three and four titled, and um, I know what the cover of number four is going to look like. And I've started working on it, but it's not um, it's not there yet. Um, will be though. Will be soon. Probably in the next month or so. I'll start talking about the title of book three, where it's a much more classic fantasy um, title. Um, I figured I'd lean into that a little bit. Um, and I'm happy with it, and um, it's going to be intriguing when you do hear it. So, uh, so yeah, that's coming. Um, so, like I mentioned, I uh, did kind of right before we started, kind of going and do some of these darker coastlines. I'm just going to pop into this now and thicken this coast, which helps make each continent really pop. You lose some of the line work you do when you erase because, you know, some of it's stuck to the graphite that's underneath. That's just kind of the nature of penciling and inking. Uh, that's okay. But I really want these coastlines to be thick. So we'll come in here and do those.
kind of a title freak. I've renamed books so many times. Um, Thrice never had its name changed. Um, in hindsight, I might have changed its name. Um, but it, I'm so happy with the title. Um, but I, I, I don't even remember how I named it. I'm sure it was some line I wrote, and I just thought, Thrice sounds like an awesome name, and I just built the whole thing off of that. Um, working backwards, T, I started writing Thrice um, December, might have even been November of 2018. Um, I was pitching the collation series to agents, trying to, and um, needed something new to write. And so I challenged myself to just start writing. I told myself I would give myself three weeks to plan, to plan a world. And then I had to start writing. And then I wrote it, the whole thing over that winter, um, getting up every morning. The, for one of the, that was the first time I was really getting up at 5 a.m. to write and driving to work finding a secluded area and writing until I started work at seven. And, um, and it worked. So I wrote that in 2018. I started writing uh, this version, which has had a few re revisions, of course, but this version of the collation story in May, no, Easter Day, actually, of 2017. Um, it had been a very eventful year for some loss in the family. And I had been doing some other things to try to get myself going. And I knew I just needed to start writing. And Easter Day went to saw family and then had just the solid urge to get home and write. And I went home and started writing and spent April and May in six weeks. In only six weeks, I wrote 175,000 words, which is insane. Um, I have never had that much output since then. Um, and it was effectively the, um, what you have read as books one and two. Oh no, sorry. I just realized I left the, left the screen. Um, what you've read is book one and two, Deathless Beast and Bone Trod was a single, um, was a single, a single book, 175,000 word single book. Um, and it went through several in the revision process of being split into two books and so on and so forth. And now it's two 150,000 word books. I'm very glad it ended up how it is, but you know, that's since 2017. So a lot of revisions. Um, I had an older version of the story of a story I wrote in 2011. Um, in my opinion, it was not good when I look back now. Um, it was a lot of not even that well-developed characters doing a lot of traveling and not doing anything. There was no plot. It was bad. Um, so you could say I started back in 2011, but basically I started in, in 20, 2017. So, And then book three, which is coming out in July, I wrote last year, and now I'm writing book four. So... Um, I've upped my game on when I can write something and have it out by, uh, which takes a lot of practice. And it's one of the hardest things to do. And you know, they talk about you know, the sophomore slump of your second book being the hardest to write. And that's true for both indie and trad, but for very different reasons. Trad, you're or, uh, for um, indie writing, you're trying to prove to yourself that you can write another book. But you are used to writing something and then putting it out. The output, well, you know, if, if, if I, you know, I spent 2017 through 2020 working on collations. So that's three years of working on a book. To turn around then in 2022 and write a book and have it ready for 2023 as a is a feat. Um, but we don't. But but that's that's the turnaround. And, and and everybody's second book is going to be harder to try to do it faster because now you know what you're doing. You know, it's it's like with kids. You know, you have your first kid. You can you can prep all you want. Then the kid comes. The second kid, you don't have time to prep. You just you just got to do it. You just got to parent, right? Um, so with traditional publishing, what ends up happening with a lot of authors, they've spent five, ten years writing a book. They get it to an agent. An agent gets it sold. 
it's been three years since they finished writing the book and being done with it before it ever sees um, publication. And at that point, after it's published, then the publisher says, okay, it's sold well. Now we would like you to write your second book. That author, don't know what, who knows what they've been working on. They could be working on a totally separate story. They could be working, they could be working on book two, but a lot of them don't. And so they'll, because they're waiting to see if the first book's going to pan out. And maybe it wasn't even contracted as a trilogy. And then the publisher says, now you got to write another book. And they have to figure out what they did three years ago and write a better book, but also not something that's so discordant with the first book, right? And um, just looking back at what I wrote in 2019, 2020, three years ago, I've become exceptionally, I was so much better. The stuff I wrote back then was so bad. Even stuff that I thought was really polished because we do get better as we write. So you could have a sophomore slump where their second book is bad because they're trying to match the first book instead of just be better. So yeah, there's your rant for the night. One of the advantages of going back over the map and touching up your lines is you start to realize other places where you want to advance things. Like I'm looking at these mountains and realizing at least the arc, arcs of the mountains themselves do need to be touched again. So I'm just going to give them a quick work too with this thick uh, 08 pen. So I'm using a much thicker pen for these to kind of get some of these lines legible. Not as worried about the hills, but the mountains need some definition. I'll say this now and I'll probably say it again later is that part, one of the main tenets of art is to know when to quit. Uh, I'm not saying I'm ready to quit on this continent. There will still be more things, There's, but there will always be things you can touch up no matter what you paint, no matter what you draw, no matter what you do with your art. Being a good artist is knowing when to say good enough because nothing will ever be perfect. It's the same with writing too. You can, you can only do so much. Eventually, the amount of extra detailing you're doing and touch-ups you're doing is going to detract from the time investment you put into it, right? Um, yeah, you can polish and 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 polish. It will never be enough. So that's where bringing someone else in to read your work. That's where saying, you know what? This is detail enough because if I go through and start doing this, other new detail I've learned and I've decided I want to do on this part of the map, I have to do it on every other inch of the map too, or it will look 
off kilter, right? So um, it's important to know when when, it, when it's a good time to stop. Um, and good enough can be, this is good enough, I'd like to work on something else now. I'm bored, I'm done. This is not something I want to have ever see the light of day. Um, and other times it's a matter of, yeah, looking at, is your time investment of what you're working on right now worth continuing on? Um, you know, you can go and re-edit a book you've even published and keep putting it out as a new edited version. But it's also nice to be able to look back 10 years from now at what you've done and say, that is me 10 years from, that's ten, me 10 years ago. And you can look at it and say, look how far I've come now. Um, because we, we do it with our with our favorite our, our authors too. You look at the early stuff they've written versus newer stuff. And sometimes their early stuff is their, is their better work because they poly, cause they did over polish it. Other times it's their new stuff that's really good and, and really blows your mind. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's do, this is, this is a five. Here, okay. I've already got a bit of an outline on these guys down, down here. So we'll finish up their mountain work on this. So that covers both of those two. I need to do some shading on the mountains, um, which yeah, I can do right now. So 
by my thinnest pen. And then I'm remarking on other continents what angle I was doing my um, shading on, and I'm going to match that here. And of course, we need to do Dragon Head Island shading. Coral reef. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> so the question is whether. So the the question I have is, do you want to represent that there is a coral reef out there, like shoals, or are you going to actually show that there is a coral reef? Because what you could do is extend your coastline. So like, let, let, let's assume that there is a coral reef, um, right, right, right here. Okay. So if we do our coastline and just start by showing that there's a coastline, right? That's easy enough. What you're showing here is you're showing breakers, right? If you're showing shoals, places where ships could um, could break on, right? You could come out here and have a second set of waves. And you could do three lines out here, you know, a main one and then ones on each side, showing that there's breakers that happen out here. Um, that says that out in here is calm, out here is rough. And that way, um, pirates who know what they're doing, 
know how to navigate through those through those shoals. So you could do it like that. Um, actually showing the coral reef, you could do lots of little islands. So let's take this same coral reef and show through that there's been um, formation of some, some islands or vice versa, there's just land. And so the coral reef has something to, to eat up, eat next to. So right here we can say, okay, and here we've got an actual set of islands. It follows the same coastline. And then it meets with the coast. And then we come back in with our fin pen and do our breakers. And do it around our islands too. So you want to think in the way of like if a cartographer is um, drawing this map so that ships can get here and there, how can that cartographer best convey um, the dangers that are there? Um, yeah. And of course, you can also name them too. So you could have an actual name along the reef saying such and such reef. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers answers a question for that. But yeah, that would be, be a, couple ways, a couple ways you could do that. And now our map has a nice little um, area where our, it's a little bit more protected from our Vikings who may be living up here in the fjords. And when they come out of Dragon's Mouth, they skip by this area because they don't like going into the shoals. So... Good question. Okay. <clears throat> Next time we might have to put some um, forests on Dragon's Head because right now it's just mountains, but I assume there's some forests here. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, and you want to ask yourself, like, what kind of what kind of reef is this? What advantage does the reef offer? Offer um, you look at the historical, like Australia with the Great Barrier Reef and uh, some of the other Pacific Islands. Um, did it provide protection in some, or in other times was it just um, for pearl diving? So was it an economic thing? Um, yeah, so those are great questions to ask yourself is what kind of um, effects the coral reef is going to have on the economy um, and protection from outside sources. Or to keep people in. I mean, like like Moana, you know, she can't leave her island because there's a reef there keeping her from, keeping anyone from ever leaving the island. So it kind of works both ways. All right, so let's see. We're getting to the end of, end of the day. End of our hour together. Um, I don't foresee any reason why we won't be here next week. Um, so I think I'll just finish off by working here on my coast a little bit. Appreciate you all coming every week that I'm on. If only to get a little work done on preparation for your week. A chance to just center yourself and start your week off with some creativity. So know that that helps me a lot.
Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I will try, Anita. I'll write 4,000 words tomorrow morning for you by 9 o'clock. We'll see. I'm in the middle of a fight, and I'm not a very good fight writer, in my opinion. I'm working on it. It takes a I have to really grind. It, it doesn't come as naturally to me as it does to other people. Um, but I do what I can. So, yeah. I think it's a good place to stop for the night. Um, I wish you all a wonderful night. And um, get a lot of reading done this week. Enjoy your time. Don't do it because you have to. Do it because you want to. And, um, yeah. Have a wonderful night, and thank you again all for coming to Happy Little Map Students, and I will see you next week. Bye. Happy Little Map Students with Happy Little Pens. Let's journey down the road together and find out where it ends. Bring your creativity, forget what week will bring. Drawing, breathing, bringing all new worlds into being.